So the quick way to do that is that with this final box here selected, I can select entire shells and make sure that that icon right there is turned off. You'll be able to tell because these, these options change. So if I grab one of those and I turn on snapping and I make sure my snap element is set to vertex, if I hit G to grab, you'll see I can line these up almost perfectly. That's how consistent the unwrapping algorithm in Blender is. This one needs to be rotated a little bit. So I'll rotate that, looks like by 90 degrees. And then I will, oh, this one is not quite the same. Oh, you see that? These were not, this was not cut fully. So which area is that though? Easy way to tell. Select that option right there next to the pivot. And that will allow us to synchronize our selection. So if I select that edge, it'll show me in the 3D view. Aha, uh -huh, it's this one. So I need to mark that as a seam. And then I need to re-unwrap everything. However, I don't want to disturb this that I've done here. So what I'll do is I'll move these out of the way. I'll grab all of these and hit P to pin them. And then I'll unwrap everything else. Perfect. Now granted, they are overlapping in ways they shouldn't be, so I will unpin them, and then I'll just move them out of the way for now. And it looks like these UVs can be aligned, so again, Shift-Tab to enable snapping. Now how do I know that overlapping these is going to work properly? Here's how I know. I know because for all of the pieces of the frame, I made the seam, the inside edge. So that means for all of these, I know that this middle edge is the outside. And that's true for all of them. So if there's any ambient occlusion baked in for these, it'll be the same for all of these shells. Because the right edge and the left edge of these islands, for every single one, corresponds to the inside edge of the actual 3D framework. If I had done some of the edge seams on the outside rather than the inside, this would not have worked. But because I knew, I knew about that going into it, I can save a lot of UV space without worrying about my ambient occlusion map looking messed up. So it's important to plan ahead on these kinds of things. So I'll get a few more of these to overlap. And then we can, then I'll move these off to the side so we can start UV unwrapping more parts. All right, so now let's actually start lining these up. So what I can do here, there's two ways to do this. I can either hold down Alt and select these edge loops, then I can hit W and align Y, or I can hold down Control and drag this lasso around them and do the same thing. Which one of those you use is going to depend on whether or not you can actually select every edge loop of every shell. So like in this one, it's going to be difficult for me to select all four of the edge loops and know that I have all four of them selected. Whereas here, there's only two shells and I know what's what. So there it's very easy to select them just by selecting the edge loops. And again, I'm doing that by holding down Alt and right clicking. Well, Alt and Shift to select multiple. And then what I can do is align X. 
there we go. That's gonna be very easy to texture on. So I'll just do that to all of these other pieces and then we will be done UV unwrapping the frame. Okay, so here if I select points I don't mean to, a quick way to deselect that is just Control Shift, left click and drag, and then you'll deselect anything that's in that lasso. All right, so now all the parts of this have been unwrapped. I'm not going to pack them just yet though. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to move them off to the side. And then I'm, cause then I'm going to move them back in once we have everything unwrapped. Cause what we're going to do is we're going to pack all of these items together into one UV square so that they can all borrow from the same texture map. 